So for today's blog post, I'm going to switch to a new format and do it more uh, like a podcast. So instead of just having to read um, and look through code sources and whatnot, I'm actually going to do some video recording. And then I'm also going to post code snippets on the blog site as well. So it'll all be kind of wrapped into one simple little bundle. My name is Doug Rutledge. I'm the co-founder and owner of development here at Bridge Communications. So today we're going to look at how do we develop a messaging extension for Microsoft Teams? So the first question is, what is a messaging extension? So when you're in the chat box, um, you've got your message here, uh, you have a number of different options. You know, you can send an emoji, you can send a GIF, sticker, those sorts of things. Those are what is called messaging extensions. You see if I hover here, I can actually find a few more that are uh, uh, sort of the preferred ones that are available. So what if we want to develop our own? Well, that's what today is going to focus on. So one of the things that was mildly annoying about the GIF section was they're really um, moderated down, so they're pretty much G-rated. A uh, guy can't really venture into PG-13R or the uh, you know category I love, not safe for work. So I decided hey, I'm just going to write my own um, kind of have some fun with my fellow employees and that's exactly what I did so today I'm going to walk you through how to do that so one of the things that might seem a little odd but it is completely true is messaging extensions use the bot framework on the back end I know you're thinking well they're not really a bot um, yeah yes and no they they're gonna use the exact same framework you would uh, like a conversation bot so uh, pretty much the steps you need to go through in Azure and things of that nature are going to be exactly the same. So uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll flip to a couple screenshots of what you need to create in Azure, um, get that in place because that'll take a few minutes to get set up, and then we'll we'll go through the code and and some of the real sort of easy ways to create one of these things. So let's just look here. Um, got a couple of files. So go ahead and go to your Azure account, create a new bot. Really what you're going to need is just a normal normal bot. You're going to need to make sure you enable the Microsoft Teams channel. Seems obvious, right? Uh, that's really all you need to do on this page. Uh, the other thing to note is when you're setting it up, you're going to want to configure your messaging endpoint. Now, one of the caveats here is everything's got to be HTTPS, which isn't surprising and not super hard in this world. You can... You can do it a number of ways. In this case, I'm going to write the back end using Node.js, since it's really simple and easy to get off the ground. Uh, and in our case, I'm going to redirect it there using uh, AAR server, like you would do for your Skype or business stuff. So if you're familiar with that, it should be super easy. You can also use something like Let's Encrypt. You can you can go up, set up it all, set up a secure site in Azure as well. However you want to do it, just note that you have to have a secure messaging endpoint. So in this case, that's going to point to where your Node.js, in, in, my, in our case today, where that service is going to be listening. So I blanked out this URL just because I don't really want everyone else using it, but that's really the only thing you're going to have to change. Now, you're going to want to make a note of your Microsoft App ID because that's how um, basically everything's going to find each other. Those are really the only two things you need to change on the bot section. Uh, your install is actually going to be a zip file. It's going to have three files in it. It's going to have an outline graphic, which is the small little graphic you'll see down here. It's going to have what's called a color graphic, which is what you'll see on the install and when you're using the app. And then it has a manifest JSON file, which we will look at here in just a second. So how do you get these files all built quickly and easily? Well, there's an app for that too. Uh, if you go into your uh, store on Microsoft Teams, you go to Developer and IT, you're gonna find the Microsoft App Studio. Now, in this case, I've already got it installed, so I don't need to install it again. Um, it's one of my apps. So if you don't have it, that's how you get it. If you do have it, this is where you go. So wanna build a new app, you go to the Manifest Editor. You can use some of these other things, but frankly, it's easier to just have this thing generate a shell um, and then edit it with, you know, your normal uh, code editor. That's what I would recommend because it does a fairly good job of building a shell, but it doesn't do much uh, that's helpful in the middle where sort of the meat of the app is. So if you want to just build a new app, 
pick it, go. So it's going to tell you, obviously, what required fields are. Uh, pretty easy. Fill out your developer name, website, <clears throat> your unique app name, um, identif identifier. You can generate one. These are really only meaningful to Microsoft Teams when you install the app. They're not meaningful to how it communicates with the bot or anything like that. So these really aren't that important to get right. Just do the best you can and you should get through it pretty, sim pretty simply and quickly and easily. Um, description, I mean, if we're using it ourselves, we're not, you know, sending it out for distribution. Uh, it can really be whatever you want at that point. Um, here's our two icons. So there's the full color one. You up, you can upload it. It'll size it and do all that stuff for you, which is nice. Um, same thing with the transparent one. And then if you want to pick an accent color, you can do that too. So these are, this is actually going to go in on manifest. It's not going to generate any files for that. But the other two, it'll build those files that I showed you earlier. Um, so once you do that, um, you're going to download it as a zip. Um, now, it's not going to install and do anything because it's missing a lot of stuff. It's really just a framework. So what I would recommend is you extract those files first um, into a spot where you can edit them. So once you do that, we're going to look at these two files. So I've kind of cleaned them up and taken out stuff that's uh, sort of specific to my app um, for the most part, just so uh, it's a little cleaner. But the first one is that manifest file. So if you look at all this stuff, Pretty much from here all the way down to where the compose extension start is all generated by that that app so really all you're going to need to do is generate this part of code right here the compose extension okay and really the things that are going to matter to you in the compose extension are the bot id and that goes back to your uh, azure bot framework uh, GUID. so you'll copy that in exactly the same um, you, you can control some settings, whether you're going to have a configuration or not. In this particular one, I don't really have a configuration, so there's no need for anybody to be able to update it. Um, and I'm really going to focus on one command. Uh, it's called search command. That's essentially where when you click on our conversation extension, it's going to pop up a box like it would on the other GIF um, con conversation extension. And it's going to let you search um, for whatever you want. It'll display thumbnails then. Uh, and you can pick it and send it. That's pretty much all you need. Uh, a couple of things to watch for. Uh, make sure your valid domains is set right. That's going to have some security bearing. So make sure that uh, where you're going with your endpoint is in one of these valid domains. Um, really, that's going to be the only gotcha that's going to have anything to do with the manifest. The rest of the stuff you kind of make note of because you're going to need you know this ID search command on the back end. Uh, so when we go to the back end, if you're familiar with Node.js, this is going to be a simple JavaScript file. If you're not, I would recommend that you get familiar with it. It's it's everywhere. Uh, it's super easy. Uh, makes life uh, you know quick and easy for testing. It's easy to log things. Uh, just two thumbs up from here. So if you're not familiar with it, um, basically you can run out of a command prompt once you've got it installed. And you'll use something like NPM, Node Package Manager, to get these packages that you need. We're going to use the packages Request, Util, Restify, and then we're going to use two that are Microsoft packages, the Bot Builder and the Bot Builder-Teams. So these basically are frameworks that are already built that can handle the entire uh, conversation that your application in Teams is going to have with your bot application on the back end and do pretty much all the work for you so you don't have to generate you know, all the JSON return files yourself. It really kind of does all that for you with the combination of the bot builder team stuff and the Restify. I mean, it's truly, you're going you're gonna to see how simple this is. So as we move down, uh, we're going to create a new Restify server. This is basically like a web server that's going to listen to uh, the traffic coming from the Microsoft Teams app. That's really all it is. All right, so we'll build our bot, um, and that just is going to tie in basically uh, here. We're going to listen on these particular post methods, and this is some of the things that our, our application is going to push. So we'll listen to those. Um, basically, here's our compose extension handler. So this is the meat of the code. This is the guy that's going to get called when the Teams app triggers. So uh, in this case, we're going to use um, the Giphy website to generate our GIFs. So 
just made a variable here. You can plug in your key. You can get a key for free. You can do, I forget what it is, something like 10,000 a day without any anybody batting an eye, uh, which should be sufficient for you, hopefully. You're not using more than that a day. Um, but if you are, you know, there's ways to um, you know, publish it with attribution and things like that that'll let you unlock even more. Um, so really, to go look that up, once we've got a request from Teams, you know, Teams comes in, we're going to go build a URL to Giphy, we're going to put in our API key here, and then Q is going to be our query. So you see one of the things here is the query. This is actually going to be what the person typed in in Microsoft Teams to your conversation extension. So we're going to read the query parameters. And we're just going to grab the first one and the value. We're going to set a limit of 100 to return. That's usually enough. It's got to respond fairly quickly or you'll get some weird error messages. But 100 comes really fast. Uh, offset would be if we're trying to do paging. So if you wanted to handle you know, page 2, page 3, page 4, um, we're really not going to go that deep. I mean, we're just going to... GIFs for crying out loud. Um, rating, here's where I've set it. It basically works, um, it'll allow everything below the top one that you've set. So if you set it to G, it's only going to allow G. PG-13, it'll allow G and PG-13. Um, kind of get the idea there. And it goes up sort of like the movie rating scale to R and so on. And the highest one is NSFW, not safe for work. So I've set it there. That's basically going to encompass everything it's got. And in my case, I wanted to return English. All right, so if there isn't a parameter, which will happen when somebody opens your conversation extension before they've searched, I want to be able to handle that. So in this case, I'm just going to look for Deadpool. So it doesn't return nothing in an error. It's just going to return something. I mean, you can make this really whatever you want, but it's just basically a filler so that they know, um, you know what to expect. And then when they search, you know, it'll all make sense to them. It's just a, a nice way there. So if there isn't any search parameter, uh, or it's empty, I just look for something. So if there's not, I kind of leave this thing alone and go. So uh, I'm using a request. We're going to go out to our Giphy thing. We'll get the JSON body, uh, and we're basically going to zip through, and then we're going to start building our card. So what your conversation backend is going to return is a, a card in JSON format. Now cards, if you're familiar with Office, um, you know, they go in Teams webhooks, they go in office groups, they go everywhere. It's sort of the foundation for a lot of the, the interaction with Office 365 products. So you should be, if you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it because I don't see it changing anytime soon. So, um, all right, so we're going to build out some things here. I just log out the title just so I can watch on the console to make sure everything's working. But I'm going to build out the logo. So... I'm going to grab from the from the Giphy JSON return uh, the downsize large URL. So I don't need to return, you know, a 1920 by 1080 graphic for something that's going to be a little thumbnail for choosing. I mean, the thumbnail on the screen is probably only 50 by 50. So pick something small. It'll make everything work faster. And that's really what we're doing here. This is just going to return the search results. So here, here we're going to build our card. And I've chosen to use Hero Card. It's the one with the sort of an image centric it's like a large image with you can wrap text on the top and bottom and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to wrap a title so i put the title that is returned back from the giphy thing i just stick that in here too i, I throw the rating on the screen just as a subtitle so you can kind of get an idea to make sure that it's working um, for images we're just going to add one and that's where we're going to add our logo um, so for buttons i've got an open url so if you want to go directly to the giphy page then you can. Uh, I've used the title view image, and then I've just put the URL to the to the image itself. All right, so we're going to push our return attachments. We're going to push the card to an attachment, basically here. And then in our response, this is C Teams Compose extension response. So this this builds all that JSON for you. Um, you can say I want it in a list format. My attachments are right here so i have an empty array that i've pushed one thing into or a minimum of one thing in my search results if there's 50 or 100 i've pushed 100 of those in there um, so basically that's my array uh, to response um, and then our, our callback
So how do we get here? You remember um, in our manifest, we defined our command as search command. So this is what is gonna come along with the query from Teams. So down here is where it all kind of hooks up. So when somebody queries the search command, we call our compose extension which is this guy that goes and builds the list. Really, that's about it. Um, just have a couple little cleanup things here, and that's our entire code block to do that. So once all that's bundled and running, um, from there, it's just a matter of let's install and try it. So if I go back to my chat space, See, I don't have my extension. If I want to install it, I can kind of follow the same process. I go back through the store, and if I don't want to put it in the store, which I probably don't, I just want to upload a custom one, I'm just going to go grab that zip file that I built, and here we are. There's our graphic that we selected. In this case, I'm not going to add it to a team because I just want it for myself. I hit install, spins a little bit, and when it's done, It'll let me know. So you can also use it up here in the command bar, which is nice. So you can search right here if you're uh, chatting with someone as well. Um, or like most commonly, it would show up and you would use it in your chat space. So it's right here. If you want it to show all the time, you just hit pin and now it's pinned. Um, their graphics do not always work all the time, so just be aware of that. You might expect your graphic to turn back into the default at some point, too. But um, So let's just do a quick search here. So here we searched for Super Troopers Cup. So this has got an R rating. This is not going to be something you could find in the Microsoft uh, default settings, and it's understandable why, but that's it. We've generated our our thing, and we've sent it along. So, for some reason, it sees it as an image and generates this too, but I don't know why yet. I haven't spent the time to <laughs> clean that out, but that's our blog post today. That's how you go from uh, nothing to fully functioning message ex messaging extensions. Um, I'll have this posted on my blog site with some code snippets. Um, thanks, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did subscribe, I'm gonna do these more frequently uh, and sort of share what I've learned. So have a wonderful weekend.